begins now. Good evening, everyone. First tonight, Tasmania's major political parties have been left to face the consequences of two separate controversies as they scurry to keep their election campaigns on track. Our reporter Meg Sides joins us now to explain what unfolded today. Meg, it's been a tough day on the campaign trail for both the Liberal and Labor parties. That's right, Kim. We'll have more on the Liberal Party shortly. But first, it's been a particularly hard week for Labor. First, it faced criticism over the highly controversial decision not to endorse Kingborough Mayor Dean Winter. But today, things got even tougher after it was revealed Labor made a secret deal with the peak hospitality body in support of poker machines. That's a major backflip on the policy it took to the 2018 state election when it pledged to ban them from pubs and clubs. It was the pillar of Labor's 2018 election campaign. An elected majority Labor government would seek to remove poker machines from pubs and clubs uh, from 2023. Now a spectacular backflip. The Labor Party striking a secret deal with the peak hospitality body in support of poker machines. I'm confident that we've been able to achieve good outcomes with those in the uh, hospitality and tourism sector of the work that we have undertaken since the last election. Refusing to release the details of the agreement. It's not a public document. Until this afternoon, finally circulating the document to the media, a memorandum of understanding with the THA signed by Rebecca White and David O'Byrne, saying the Labor Party supports an owner-operator EGM gaming model and the rights of pubs and clubs to operate gaming machines. The board sat down with me and did the MOU with the Labor people, so it was only kept between a small number of people. But from my point of view, uh, it doesn't worry me at all that it's made the public life change, to be frank with you, because there's nothing in it we need to hide. A move which has shocked the Greens. It's the most um, staggering and shameful capitulation of a political party in Tasmania I've seen for a very long time. Resulting in more questions than answers. I think it's unacceptable that this was kept secret and that Labor have to, had to be dragged into the open with it. It certainly begs the question, what other deals have they made in the background? That Labor has abandoned everyone who at the last state election voted for Labor on the basis of their pokies policy. Uh, Labor and the Liberals on pokies are identical. The Premier says it's unsurprising. Yeah, you know, it just seems incredible that um, they don't seem to be able to make up their mind on anything, to be frank. It comes as Labor today announces its policy on the Westbury prison site, while touring a TAFE campus at the other end of the state. Our position is to not build the prison where the government have identified for it to go, which is Lee Road, to go back to the drawing board to make sure that we do the proper consultation that's required with the community. Campaign day, Labor would rather forget. And Meg, the day wasn't any easier for the Liberal Party. No, not at all, Kim. A video has re-emerged of Franklin Liberal candidate Dean Ewington attacking the government's COVID policies. Earlier today, the Premier promised to have words with the candidate and it hasn't ended well with, for Mr Ewington. This afternoon, he abandoned his campaign, stating he cannot see eye to eye with pre Premier Peter Gutwin. It's arguably the biggest upset for the Liberal Party so far and overshadowed a major announcement. The Liberal campaign today sailed into shipbuilder Incat. The Premier throwing the company a $100 million lifeline, a loan designed to keep it afloat in rough economic seas. The 500 strong workforce will build a new boat, although it doesn't yet have a buyer. And they will find a customer or a charter customer for this vessel and will provide interest-free finance for three years. Now, this announcement today gives us the confidence to uh, have the workforce going forward and building a world-class product which we know the market will absorb. But one Liberal candidate has found himself shipwrecked. Jim owner Dean Newington gave the government's COVID restrictions a spray in a video previously posted online. You know, no politician, no bureaucrat, no one has the right to treat us as mugs and to keep us in the dark like they are at the moment. And I've just had enough of it, to be honest. It sparked fury from Greens MP Rosalie Woodruff. As an epidemiologist, I don't understand uh, how Peter Gutwin can put uh, Dean Newington and public health safety in the same sentence. There were four boating words from the Premier this morning. Well, look, I'll obviously be having a conversation with Mr Ewington later today. By the afternoon, the candidate had been muscled out. Mr Ewington has decided that it would be best for him to uh, resign his candidacy. 
In a statement, Mr Ewington said both men respected the right to free speech. But in light of the Premier's strong stance with COVID-19, I feel there are irreconcilable differences given the strong views I hold on this matter. The saga has left the party red-faced over its pre-selection process. They do do social media checking, um, but this uh, particular video wasn't picked up. Mr Ewington's replacement is fellow Clarence Alderman James Walker. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian health authorities are